Question time. Question Everybody time. loves a bit of question time. Right, okay, let's do that. It's probably a bit more interesting than actual question time at the minute. Okay. We'll get more resolved. Okay. Okay. Right, okay, thanks for joining The Average Golfer and The Average Golf Pro. We are back inside. It's a little bit wet outside, but we're going to start a new series, and it's called Question Time. Original. We've just decided that about 10 seconds ago, but I like it. Uh, So the idea being, in the last couple of weeks on social media, and mainly led by uh, Twitter, is I put out there asking for some questions that uh, myself and Lewis can go through and give you some opinions. So it's very much about topical debate, what's going out there on in the world of golf right now, or anything you want us to discuss. So Lewis has no idea what questions are coming. I have no in. idea. So I'm gonna... I've just been told to sit down, get comfy. Well, because I want a natural reaction. The idea being is just uh, give some honest opinion and feedback. So I'm, gonna, I'm, le- I'm looking over at the screen, because what I've done... I've took some uh, snapshots of some questions that have come in. Uh, we'll start with this one. It's a good one for you. You're reading the question there. This is from Bunkers Golf Society. He asks us to talk about the expense of golf equipment right now. And and I know about the rising cost of golf equipment. It's, a, it's something that a lot of people are commenting on. Um, we've seen new irons from Mizuno last week at maybe 180 a club. Yeah, 180, the, the MP20 HMBs. Yeah. Thoughts on it? <clears throat> it's it's a difficult one to answer working in the golf industry because you know but I, I have first hand experience of the sort of how the that affects the you know the whole experience of especially you know my my initial reaction was in the fitting when it you know it it, it appeared to be the best club in the bag for you know it, it was certainly coming. What for the MP twenty? Yeah, MP twenty HMB, and then and then you have the conversation, and unfortunately, it was a case of, well, what alternatives are there? Because straight away put off by price, you mean? Absolutely straight away, and it even contemplated dropping, in this case, a four iron, to, to make pretend, it for for cost reasons, which would you know have a potential detriment. I think for me, game. for me, the thing is, the thing that I don't really understand is and. and Maybe someone, maybe a manufacturer can uh, put reason to it, but where has the increase in cost come from? That'd be good to know, yeah. Is it R&D costs? Well, I think that's what they'd explain it as, maybe. Uh, cost of raw material, I don't know. But if you take a look at, I mean, Epic Forge, £250 a club. We've got TaylorMade P790 TIs, which are... Probably more like 300 a club, Expensive. isn't it? Expensive, yeah, 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 up there. Then you've got the PXG 0211s, yeah. £200 a club. And then, like I said, the bit of a surprise was the MP20s coming in at 180 an iron. I think that, because that's a real hike for Mizuno again. Yeah, and a lot more from just the standard blade. So again, yeah. you, would you put it down to R&D or, you know, or what's happening? Because It's a tough you know. one. But again, it goes back to this age-old question of like encouraging people to get involved in the game. My answer to that is I still think that I, I don't I'm not really a great believer in that argument because I still think there's plenty of product in the second hand market. So I don't think it puts people off getting involved. I don't buy into that at all. No. But I do think it's more of a I think for me, and I'm also of the opinion, you know, if if, if you if it doesn't fit your budget then don't bother looking at it. So I've got all them thoughts as well. Having yeah. said all that Yeah, I think as well is it's like you know, we relate it back to like cars. If it's not in your budget, you don't have a look no. at it. But I, I think, as well, I, I, one thing to remember is I remember buying a brand new R7 quad driver, which is the first driver that I really purchased. You know, um, you know, I want, you know, I didn't get fit for it, which, you know, it was a, it was a long time ago. But it was two hundred ninety nine pounds. Yeah, and it was a two. It's two thousand six, two thousand seven yeah. driver, and. Um, and it was three hundred pounds, and I know they're a little bit more expensive than that. But yeah, you know, with the with the way in the last ten, it was twelve years ago. I don't think that's it's not no, seen no. that it's gone. But maybe they went down a little bit to go back up. And but I, I, you know, four hundred and fifty pound for a driver now plus does put a lot of people off. Yeah. Um, I think so. it's just for me. It's just been the the sudden hike. It's like where it's gone from. Like I said, the irons is the. I know drivers went seem to go from three fifty to four fifty. 
very quickly. Very quickly yeah. and, and it's the same with the irons. All of a sudden, like I said, there's been a jump up in cost. So again, your own opinions would be interesting. But uh, thanks to uh, Andy at Bunkers Golf Society for that question. Next one is the Combat Golfer. Again, this one came from Twitter. And he asks, ladies, men's, junior tees, are they still relevant or is that a thing of the past? Absolutely. Absolutely what? Thing of the past. Yeah. Yeah. For yeah. what reason? Absolutely. For the <clears throat> enjoyment levels, participation. Yeah. yeah. I think just the the you know modern society. I think for you to you know say oh, I'm playing off the ladies' tees or the yeah. men's tees or the. I think that's just um, that's just a non just a non start for me. I think yeah. I, we had it recent recently. I, I you know I played a social round of golf and. It was blowing, so we played off the forward tees. You know, we, we what would you consider the yellow tees? Um, but realistic, you know, re, you know, again, you know, what what would the point of well, me, the thing just because just because I'm a pro going all the way to the back tees? You know, I think for an enjoyment level on that day, we just went, yeah. let's play off the forward tees, and I think if you know, lady lady, lady golfers at, at elite level. You know, I'd love to see them um, back there. In, you know, essentially making it, the course a bit longer, yeah, um, and improving their game because of that. And then again, you know, the big thing watch. for me, the, the the big thing where I've spotted it is when you play when you play in Europe. Um, I don't know whether they operate in America the same system or not. Yeah. When the European courses, you'll get a well, it's a meterage, isn't it? But you'll get several different tee positions from several different uh, yardages, let's say. And that, again, is a massive, can make a massive difference. And you choosing the correct tee to play from in terms of relating it to your ability yeah. can make a whole difference. And I think drop the ego, play from what suits you. Yeah. I played at West Cliffs, which is one of the toughest courses I've played. And again, I think they had six different tee boxes. And trust me, you didn't want to be anywhere near the back yeah. three, really. We had the conversation in Abu Dhabi, didn't we, yeah? We, me and you play off the back tier at Abu Dhabi Golf Club. Yeah. It's, We're not enjoying it, no. are we? And that's uh, the big point, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Hopefully that comes with, I think, the, the change in the, the slope, slope rating. Yeah. I think the, world, you know, the, the way the handicap system is going to change, I think it would be more acceptable to play off the tee boxes and the core set up that you, know, you fit into in terms yeah. of slope rating and you pick how, how easy you want it on that day. Yeah, I'd agree with that. There you go. That's the answer to the combat golfer. Right, next one up is Neil Travis. Um, is a half set of clubs the way forward? Does it make you think more? Do you ever play with half set of clubs? Yeah. 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 I, I like throwing a half set in a pencil yeah. bag and go yeah. and have a. Uh, make, it does make you think more. Yeah. You know, does the, it make you a better that. player? I think, I, I think there's no doubt that it, it would add value to, to your golf. Yeah. You're learning to play. You different have sometimes, types of shots. Different types of shots. Yeah. Having to use the ground a bit more, you, you certainly have to think about it a bit more. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think it's. Golf's a lot now. You pick a number, you point, you shoot. Yeah. This takes a lot of that away. Um, definitely something I'd recommend. Yeah, I'd agree. I mean, I like playing. I very rarely go out with a full set of clubs and uh, I very rarely go out on my own set anyway. But I generally take, like I said, whatever's uh, in the bag at the time. And I actually like uh, the fact of um, having half a set to, for exactly the same reasons to be able I, I don't necessarily have the ability to do it but it's something I enjoy is to be able to try and hit different types of shots I always think about the wedge thing everybody now wants uh, six wedges in the bag for every single yard you've got to have a wedge for 50 for 60 for 70 yeah. and again when I started playing golf you had a pitching wedge and a sand wedge and you had to learn to hit either of those clubs at different uh, ball flights different yeah. distances and I still prefer really carrying you know, well, I, I probably won't because again, I like to be spoiled. But I, I like just having a pitch in wedge in the back. Yeah, just different, different choices shot. And yeah, uh, yeah, it's more fun. I well, I enjoy it anyway. Uh, same, uh, sl slightly. Uh, Owen Curry asked a question, um, but it's got a slight link to that last one. Uh, how and I, and you can answer this, Lou. This is beyond me. How do you get a lower ball flight in the wind? Oh, I think, <clears throat> oh, yo. Know, Creating a lower ball flight is that's two elements to it. Obviously, you know, spin. You know, you can visibly see a ball spin up in the air when it's into the breeze. Um, but you know, hitting a lower ball flight would be you know back of the stance. Yeah. Lower loft. You know, meet more of a descending blow. Um, but obviously, all of that then creates a little bit more backspin when you're hitting down on it. Um, so. For me, it would be back, you know, further back in the stance. Yeah. 
uh, hands a bit forward, you, you know, even weight a bit forward, um, but you've got to hit it a little bit softer. That would be the main thing. Yeah, you know, so club no up point. as well. So yeah, club up. Yeah. So you go less loft. Yeah. So you can hit it a bit softer. You're still yeah. going to create the distance. Um, something that's relevant to Conway. Yeah. For the golf day. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that would be. It would be. You know, that's the when it's breezy, swing it easy. Would be the best. You know. It's a good analogy. Isn't it? Yeah. It is, it is. But it's very true that, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, the, the opposite is the the, yeah. the opposite is to try and give it a whack. When you yeah, you see it all the time is people, you know, when it's easy, uh, when it's breezy, swing it easy with the irons, yeah. and then they get on a tee, yeah. and they try and lump it with like driver. I see that all the time, and I think it applies through the bag, driver. You know, I don't even lower the tee height. You know, yeah. hit up on it. Uh, no, you know, uh, with a driver, low spin. That's the key. That little, there you go. Good answer. Like you said, that one's for Lewis, not for me. Uh, John Euron asks, um, do golfers really benefit from replacing golf clubs every two years? Um, That's a good question. It's a good question, yeah. I think that I think that the answer is, I would say in very simple terms, no. And it depends what benefit means. I think that's the first thing, isn't yeah. it? Depends what you mean by benefit. Uh, I've never seen no golf club make anybody's swing change or make them a better golfer in the kind of grand scheme of things yeah I think it would go back to what you did two years ago when you bought them if yeah. you went and got properly fitted um, through the bag for everything, if you come back in two years you know providing your swing is the same you know, your speed is the same so your physical sort of makeup is the same are any clubs going to make you dramatically different I doubt it yeah. you know I think if, if swing changes if you 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 know, you, you if you're younger and you've grown, then yeah. obviously that affects you. But um, if you do it right first time, in terms of custom, I think fit, two yeah. two years of uh, you know, um, it won't make that much difference. No, and I think it depends again. I mean, I think there has been times throughout um, product manufacturing where there has been leaps it forward in technology, um, and I think there's times when it just plateaus and not a great deal. You only see small differences in terms of the. The benefits that a um, a certain club might be suggesting it gives you, so I do think that can vary as well. Uh, but I think there's a reality is that um, that word benefit, and for me sometimes, like I said, benefit can be a thing like it, I, I'd associate it with enjoyment as well. I mean, buying a new set of clubs if it's if it's your hobby and something you enjoy doing, you might get a bit more benefit with a bit of a smile on your face with a new set of bats in the bag. But that doesn't mean to say it's going to make you. A better golfer, so it depends what benefit really uh, means, I suppose. Um, I'm going to go. Uh, there's an interesting question come in, and I, I've not I've wrote it down, but I haven't got down the person who asked the question. So I'll, I'll try and find out by the time I edit the video. Um, has golf YouTube changed at all? I think it's certainly more people doing it isn't it it has yeah there's been I think, the, the, I think that's the, a very the, good point yeah and I think the, obviously the people who are doing it are continuing to do it so there's more content from those people there's more obviously variety there's a, there's a back lot you know, there's a back portfolio of people who are doing it and yeah. then there's obviously more people doing it as well um, I think so one I interesting think bit for me the first thing the that springs to mind it, no, is, it, as well is, is the kind of as it changed and I don't know whether this is the kind of what you're referring to is the kind of like What's interesting to me is the type of content has changed significantly. So there's been, you used to have, two years ago, the standard stuff would have been for me, you had Rick Shields, Peter Finch, Matt Fryer, and uh, Andy Carter would do course vlogs. That was quite a frequent thing they'd do yeah, as, yeah, a, yeah. As, a, as a four ball. Uh, they've gone by the wayside, and Rick was very much leading the way in terms of uh, product review. Um, Mark Crossfield again was always sort of uh, it was always the tour stuff as playing golf and product review Yeah, I'm trying to think who else might have been around sort of two or three years ago and then there was obviously there's the me and my golf scenario which again they're still doing yeah. the same thing yeah. the thing that's changed for me really I suppose is the kind of the Rick Pete four ball that sort of fell by the wayside There's, you don't see them doing anything in terms of course logs so they they, they don't exist anymore I think there is a, a lot less maybe core stuff yeah I wonder why that is around at the moment but yeah it's uh, from I, I, that element it's changed definitely well, a good one for me I'm going to ask a question out at the moment is do, how many people miss those course vlogs be from anybody because like I said there's not a great deal of on course uh, content going on right now um, 
So that'd be a good question for me in terms of gauge what people are looking for. The other thing being is that the bit that interests me at the moment is there's a lot of reviews, and again, uh, I'm gonna to refer to Rick stuff where they kind of like the illegal golf ball, the extra, extra long club shaft. The, the, I would bracket them at the alternative videos. Yeah, but they've yeah, been yeah. massive. I mean, the yeah, increase yeah. in sort of popularity, the views that are, uh, um, Rick in particular has achieved for those type of videos has been phenomenal. That's something that does interest me and something that um, understanding the, the logic into how that's changed and where, where that's come about. I mean, I, I never thought I'd see the day where we were reviewing a golf ball that's illegal that you can't even use out there. Yeah, that's course. it. And what interest it created, yeah. Yeah, but it's huge, huge video. So I think it has changed. I think with most things with YouTube, um, it will continue to continue to evolve. And uh, I think more and more channels will come about as well. be interesting to hear what everyone thinks of how it's evolved and what, what, what they watch. Yeah, well, what they watch and what you'd like to watch. I think that's a good indicator, like I said, a question from me. Um, another question that's come in, and I'm re this is the notes that I haven't got the names. I'll get these up. When is a review an infomercial? And I like this question because... An infomercial? What's yeah, it's... from the US, that? Well, it, it, it's become... I'll tell you what, it's become quite a um, buzzword, I think is what they say infomercial um, and I, I read it I, I seen it from my own videos on um, when I did the seed golf ball review seed golf ball they are, are, a, are a sponsor partner of the channel so I stopped reviewing golf balls because of the link yeah but what we did do is I thought well, we'll do a team average so for those of you who don't know team average is where we get four five golfers different handicap different levels they all test the product and give their opinion so i thought well, we'll do the seed golf ball you've seen the video i've you? seen the video. right yeah. so so they reviewed the product and that way i stayed out of it so i've got no opinion on it so i've got no conflict yeah. of interest my integrity is not sort of questioned and in that video i think there was three or four comments where it said it was an infomercial now for me so i was a bit i, I, I was a bit upset by that because i don't like creating infomercials uh, and like I said, the whole idea is it's supposed to be this sort of unbiased yeah, yeah. view. But anyway, the point is, when does a review become an infomercial was the question. I think, for me, every review is an infomercial, to be quite honest with you. I think if you're reviewing a product, uh, you're relaying information in a way that you would see in a commercial. I mean, it's, it's just a modern commercial, isn't it? I mean, I think in most... Whatever genre, and I always refer to cameras as being what I, I watch videos about. Cameras. I do like cameras. And I, I like watching reviews of cameras. Um, but I see them purely, they're, they're nothing more than a, a modern marketing way of uh, a modern commercial. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So I think well, they're, again, they're, all, everyone... they're all infomercials, I yeah. think. But I think, you know, it's our, our opinion, you know, matters to anyone who wants to listen to our opinion. Often it matters to. Yeah, yeah. And it's, but, it's, it's uh, a great question because I think it's, the reason I think it's a great question is because like I said it's a buzzword I've seen it used quite a lot and maybe it's the way in which an, uh, a video is put together maybe the, maybe the seed golf ball in that case because that's the video I'm, I'm, I know I've seen it yeah. referenced maybe it's the way it was filmed I don't know but for me in answer to the question uh, I think every review really is a bit of an infomercial, I think, because uh, I don't know if that's good or bad, but I think essentially that's what they are. Um, right, we're going to finish off. How long have we been doing? Is that 19 minutes? I think we'll try and keep... So the idea being, just uh, let me stop here for a second. Um, I want to do more of these videos. We're going to do... Well, the idea was to do more of this discussion out there on the course. That's why Lewis was thrown in at the deep end here. I didn't tell him what we were doing. Because the idea was to play around a golf and we'll discuss these questions that have been thrown in out there on the golf course. Um, so what I'd like you to do is, if you've enjoyed what you've watched today, then please hit that like button. But in terms of the comments, either comment on some of the things that we've been discussing today or or and as well can you throw in some questions you want answering for future episodes of this kind of thing that we'll be filming whether it be in here or out there on the course and i'll make sure that we try and answer the best questions that are put forward and give you a bit of a shout out we're going to finish with one question and i know i'm going to struggle with it because i've half read it already and i know i'm going to struggle for an answer so over to you links golf cup which is um uh, he organises uh, some great competitions 
mainly in and around the UK, but he asks the best Oh, links. I didn't see that. I thought he was asking the best par three, four, and five, but he refers to links. So the best par three on a links course you've played. Ooh. Wow, that's a tough one. I can give. I'll tell you what. I'll give you the option: best par three, four, or five that springs to mind on a links. Not li on a links. It's got to be a links, mate. That's the question. I didn't write them. So I hit the. Pause. I like. I like the. So I, I hit like the pause the, button. I like the. Um, the posted Sam Patroon is is for par three. Have you played it? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were just throwing that one in there, just picking any. Oh yeah, yeah. No, no, no. So, good, good hole. Well, so, I was hoping you'd pick a par three because that's what you said your favourite type. Yeah, of I love par, par three. Threes, you yeah. like a birdie on a par three. Yeah. There's a couple of great par threes on. Ah, oh, there's a couple now. You can't. Well, I'm throwing it alone. Because I'm still. Well, thinking. is it is is New South Wales? Oh come Golf on. Club Australia Lynx course. If you've played it, that's just name dropping. That's it. I mean, I so was, six, I, six. I was thinking the sixth hole. I was thinking, like the, fourth, I was thinking the fourth at Rill. Have you played that? Great hole. That's links, mate. Proper links. Never mind New South Wales. The, the fours are par five. That's the one I'm on about. <laughs> Great hole. I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to. Um, I'll tell you what. Uh, somebody else can answer that one. What's your best par three, four, or five? I've played. Oh, it's just too many. We need to throw up a picture of the sixth hole at New South Wales. I'll give so. you that. I'll give you a great starting hole. The first hole at Kilspindy, par three. That's a great start to anyone's round of golf, and it's a par three. Yeah, love that hole. It's not the best one I've ever played, but it's certainly one that's just springing to my mind. Anyway, we're going to leave it there. We've done 22 minutes of Q&A in this new episode, which is Question Time, aptly named by Lou. Um, as I say, thank you for watching. Stick the comments down below. The more questions we can uh, you can fire at us, the uh, the more the more chance you've got of appearing in the next episode. And like I said, if the weather's all right next time, we'll answer these questions out on the fairways. Right, I think that went all right. Uh, yeah, I think it'd be better on the fairways. Lovely. <laughs> See you soon. <laughs>